alongside Mark Kinsella as well, who's just signed for Charlton today, £150,000 move from Colchester. Ricky first. Ricky, you're a big money signing for Birmingham City. Do you felt you did yourself justice at St Andrews? No, not really. I mean, if I was to be honest with myself, I don't really think um, I really performed to my full capabilities due to a number of reasons, which I won't go into today. But um, sometimes things happen for a reason and it happens. You know, I've seen some great footballers over the years that have go, gone for big money moves and not actually produced the goods. Um, you have to just get on with it. Hopefully I can put that behind me now and um, have a good month at Charlton. Do you feel you've got a fair chance at Birmingham City? Is that what you're saying? Um, not really, you know, but it's six of one and a half a dozen of the other. You know, the easiest thing to do in life is to point the finger when things ain't gone wrong, gone well. And I don't really want to do that. But there is a lot of things that um, went against me. And, um, you know, I have to accept it, you know. As much as I would have liked to have produced the goods at Birmingham, um, it wasn't to be. So now I have to move my career on and I'm just fortunate and grateful to Charlton that they've given me that opportunity to do that. Good luck tonight, Ricky. Thank you. And Mark, you signed too late to play tonight, but uh, do you see this as a big career move for you? Yeah, it's been happening uh, for the last couple of years. People have been saying for me to, um, to take the chance and go, but nobody's really come in with the offer. And in the summer, chat and invited me down for uh, three weeks training with them. And an offer was made, but it didn't sort of uh, come off between the two clubs. Um, so I carried on week to week with Colchester and uh, Chad made a made a bid yesterday and it's all come true. Short trip here to see tonight's game for you, but obviously you want to get into first team action as soon as possible. Nine under 21 caps for Ireland. Do you see this as a possible bridging of the gap to full level? Yeah, I mean, I've always been told by when Morris was in charge that to get into the senior squad, you've got to be out of the third division. Um, and Chad not give me that opportunity. Um, I would have liked to play today, but obviously we didn't sign in, in time enough. But, you know, the, the deal is done. I think I'm cup tied for Tuesday, nice game as well. So my next game, hopefully, if selected, will be a... Uh, Hold them at home. We okay, wish you well. Thanks very much, Mark. Thank you very much. Back to the studio. A look at one or two incidents that Bradley was involved in. Obviously, we'll see the goal in a minute. But uh, you were shouting, go for goal here, and he didn't, did he? Yeah, I thought Alan Brazil was perfectly right. And, uh, you know, I'll have a word with Brad tomorrow and tell him <laughs> that he should have bore down on goal. And, and I think the interesting thing, really, Russ, was that uh, when he scored his goal, we saw later on, almost uh, a couple of minutes afterwards, full of confidence, yeah. ball bounces for him, and he's prepared to have a shot. It's just probably that little lack of confidence at that time, trying to make doubly sure. But this is the goal. Comes back. I'm amazed that Simon Milton didn't put that into the, into the crowd. But uh, Bradley's pulled away at the far post. Big Leeburn's got across the front, attracted two defenders. And he's got himself in that space between the centre half and the right back. And it's a really good header. Mm. No chance for the keeper. I mean, it's a great header, wasn't it? certainly is. The goalkeeper's trying to get across to his, his far post. Couldn't have, uh, couldn't have bought it in a better position. Beautiful placing by Bradley there. And he had an, this shot here just a few minutes afterwards. Yeah, this is where he's full of confidence. Obviously, the ball's bouncing around. He's, he's not quite sure whether he wants to get it down or whether he wants <laughs> to pass it. And he's thought to himself, right, could be my night tonight. I'm going to have a strike. And it, and it turned out a good strike. It's on target and uh, made Forrest tip it over. And we saw just a couple of times in the last few minutes of the first half, he got himself into good positions, didn't he? So, you know, his confidence is high, as you confidence say. Confidence is high, and he's working well with Lieber, and as I say, he's taking up positions and, and, and spacing off of him well. And uh, I think the goal has just lifted the whole team's confidence, really. Mike, penalty, could they not in the uh, early yes. part of the second half? Yeah, Jamie Stewart, who eventually was sent off, I thought was very fortunate to get away with this. He's tackling from behind. The attacker's got the run on him, and it's just this challenge here where, yes, he might be trying to play the ball. He probably gets a touch on it, but it, it wasn't, I don't think, um, a very good challenge in that situation. And um, he's paid the price, really. Yeah, sadly for Jamie Stewart, another challenge, Mike, a couple of minutes later. It went horribly wrong for him because he got his marching orders, didn't he, from Mr Gurnham Singh? That's right. It was a great run from Thompson, and uh, he's got called a little bit. He gets back doesn't get back far enough and makes the challenge. But unfortunately for Jamie, it got him the red card and, and gave Ipswich a free kick on the edge of the box. Mm. And the referee at first thought it was a penalty, didn't he, Clive? Because we yes, read his I lips. think uh, he actually mouthed as, as uh, the incident, just after the incident, that he was given a penalty when asked by one of the Charlton defenders. But as you can see, all credit to the referee, he did consult the linesman and uh, it was given in perfectly the, the right position. Now this is what happened here. The goal, the equalising goal, Steve yeah, Sedgley. Tremendous free kick. Um, obviously, it, that was where he was aiming for, and he executed it perfectly well. The interesting thing here is Steve Brown, he points to the top corner there. Yes. Just <laughs> tries to tell his keeper where it's going, 
I don't and, think uh, he'd have got it anyway. I don't think he him. would. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was perfectly executed. Right in the top corner. He couldn't have wished for a, a sweeter left foot free kick. Steve Sedgley got the man of the match award tonight. Justified, do you think? Yeah, I thought he played well, but I thought the whole Ipswich side played a lot better in the second half, and it was the sort of start that they needed to get themselves back into the game. So that was one all after Steve Sedgley put in that beautiful free kick, and then Ipswich got a second goal. Charlton were down to ten men, and it was that man, Alex Matty. Yeah, Klaus Thompson in the second half again particularly came in, in, into his own. And uh, although it was a, a, a last-ditch touch, really, to knock the ball through, Maffey had timed his run perfectly well. This is Klaus Thompson at full stretch, just helps it on. But Matthew's made a great run from out to in, got across, good first touch around the keeper, sure. and uh, slides it in superbly well. I've seen you do that a few times. Now, Bradley, Alan nearly equalised it for Charlton, right near the end, didn't he? And you were sort of half out of your seat, you thought he must score, Clive. Yeah, he, he, he actually made a superb first touch. And it was one of those, he's, he's, he's on the half turn, he has to strike it, left foot volley. And anywhere else but there, I think it would have gone in. The keeper was uh, delighted that it was around his body and he could drop on it. Mm. Craig Forrest is allowed to save that tonight. It's his birthday, isn't it, you see? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think Bradley would be too pleased with the way, the way that uh, it was executed.